Welcome to Conversate, a podcast where we engage in conversation. This week, I, Kevin Bender, am sitting down with Taylor Peering. He's a guy. He's a guy that likes gardening. Uh, we're talking about this week God's care of his creation, that he has created uh, a whole world for us to enjoy, to delight in, just as he delights in it, um, but also to get to work in it, to get our hands dirty. And uh, so we'll talk to Taylor. We'll talk about different ways we can get involved in the creation, um, different ways we have delighted. And uh, we hope as you listen to this conversation, uh, maybe you're inspired to uh, take on something yourself. If nothing else, consider the way that God uh, tends to you in your life, the way that he is growing uh, his spirit and faith in you. And as always, we hope that you're able to take something from this conversation and share it with someone else you talk to. Clink. <laughs> hey, Taylor. Hello, hello. How's it going? Greetings. Oh, yeah. I didn't tell you before, but you can put the mic right up to your mouth. Right up here. It sounds so oh, loud, okay. but it's not for that. Well, hey, viewers, if you're listening to this and it's too loud, just let us know, okay? Send an email to pastorbender at copperluth.org. It's nice to say not throwing Aaron under the bus for all the emails for this. Yeah, you, I should have done that. <laughs> well, you can, hey, uh, viewer, you can also send that email, redirect that to Pastor Gierke at copperluth.org. No, I'm just kidding. Um, but I'm not kidding about hearing my friend uh, Taylor. Taylor, how do you say your last name? Peering. 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 I always see it. It's spelled like pie ring, yeah. right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. But it's like you're peering around a corner or something. Uh, is that how you would explain it? Like if you were in a class and your professor was asking the first day of class? Um, I guess so. I, normally, they don't ask my last name. Normally, it's just first name. Oh, let's get the first name. Yeah. There you go. We'll have Taylor peering on the show today. Uh, Taylor... It's good. Dude, I'm thinking about our friendship, our relationship. I haven't known you for crazy long. No, yeah, it's been almost a year. Yeah, is that a year since I learned your name? <laughs> since we were around? See, because I'm always slow. I count my relationships sometimes by when I finally learn people's oh, names. yeah. But I, definitely in like the Lent or like an Advent even. No, I, f I feel like the one of the things that like I noticed right away, because I, I started coming here beginning of fall semester of last year was like, you seem to remember my name right away, both you and Aaron. And I was just like, how do they remember everybody's name so well? Like, <laughs> I just, just like, I would forget immediately. And mm. so like, I feel like you knew my name pretty quickly. Well, I appreciate that encouragement. It's very kind of you. Uh, but certainly recognize like your crew, you kind of roll with the crew mm -hmm. uh, here at church. Uh, well, I would say there's maybe seven of you. Yeah. Maybe there's more. It, it fluctuates throughout the school year, and during the summer, it's a lot less. But well, and now so part of my funniness uh, was I saw I saw you with this crew, and you got to help me. Uh, are some of those folks currently attending Michigan Tech? Yes, uh, the majority of them are. Yes, um, and then right now it's just me and one other that are not students. That's it. Yes. See, so I lumped in with students because you're hanging out with student mm -hmm. uh, esque people. But ta so Taylor, if you don't mind, just uh, yeah, what are you doing in life? Like, tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah. So I work for Michigan Tech. Um, I work in their testing center, and so we do uh, like proctored exams for students that need accommodations or athletes that were traveling or stuff like that. Um, yeah. And so it's just real, real simple, just doing some proctored exams. Um, but I moved up here like eight years ago now to work with, with college students through university. Um, and so I have a little bit of background in like mentoring and discipling students and stuff like that. And so that's what originally got me up here. Um, and then just the community is great up here and mm. the, the nature is awesome up here as well. And so I wanted to stay up here after I stopped working for university, um, but still be connected with Michigan Tech and the students there and, and stuff like that. And so, yeah, I work in the testing center now. A little yeah. bit up here. It's great. Right so were you a part of university while you were also a student at Michigan Tech? Uh, I was not a student at Michigan Tech, um, but I was a part of university where I was a student, yes. Got it. Okay, mm -hmm. where did you go to school? I went to Milwaukee School of Engineering. MSOE? Yeah. Dude, do you know a guy named Luke Powers? Luke Powers. This is a deep cut here. Sorry, folks. When would he have been there? I don't know. I'll talk to you after. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> we'll, we'll try and figure it. We'll try and find it. Uh, that's fun. So, are you from Wisconsin? Yeah, from Milwaukee. You're from Milwaukee. No kidding. So, I don't know if I've told you this, but my folks live just in West Allis. I That sounds really familiar because my folks also live in West Allis. Oh, my Allis. gosh. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Maybe we talked about this. Yeah. So one of the reasons uh, 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 I wanted to bring Taylor on the show today is um, because you also have an interest in caring for creation, mm -hmm. if you will, or I mean, gardening, maybe yeah. more simply put. But what, 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 yeah, what is your, I mean, you mentioned in your, your brief, you know, story for yourself there that it was the nature up here that mm -hmm. also kind of like wanted you to stick around. Yeah. 
Um, yeah, what's your like? What's your experience of I don't know creation? Like, when did you start to get interested in anything nature oriented, and what did that look like? Yeah, so I feel like it was got to be when I was little because I remember growing up thinking I wanted to be a herpetologist, which is someone who studies amphibians and reptiles. Very cool. Um, and obviously, I don't do that now. Um, mm. But yeah, I just like going, we called it like frogging with my dad, we would go and just wander through swamps and catch frogs and turtles and stuff. Um, and then my parents had like a small, like casual garden and we would can salsa and stuff like that. Um, and then we would do a bunch of like camping every summer. And so I feel like it was just a lot of just like exposure to it from a very young age on, mm. um, just created a love for, for nature. And then I, I think there's something fascinating about being able to put like some seeds in the ground and then through some water and so whatever it grows into food like that's just like a remarkable thing um and just how all the plants are just so different even though they all start from a seed is just mm. I, I think it's super fascinating and so there's like a natural curiosity to how plants work and stuff like that absolutely it's like magic yeah i think that's how there's a dude gk chesterton you ever mm. heard of that fella mm -hmm. i think he talks about that where it's like you look at the world and some you know Especially in, in this age, this modern age, right? Mm -hmm. You can look at the world and <clears throat> you can always talk about it in scientific terms. And that can sometimes almost make it boring. Mm. And he like always like got into the childlike wonder of just like, leaves are green. Yeah. This is crazy. You know, like why, why is there this abundance of color out in the world? Mm -hmm. um, and I kind of hear that same sort of, it's almost like a childlike wonder. Yeah. Right? Where, how this stuff works. And for me, it's been kind of wild being up here or even thinking about not even being here, but just nature in general was not my... Mm -hmm. upbringing like mm -hmm. i was more of like an avoid nature at all costs kind of yeah. guy um not totally but like we kind of went as a family from you know like camping like tent camping to then like rv mm -hmm. to then like let's just stay in a hotel or be airbnb yeah you know and in the summers like you know like all the kids would be outside playing and i'd be like in the basement playing video games you know like super pasty white still <laughs> and uh so but then <clears throat> when i married molly uh her family upbringing is like the opposite, mm. totally nature oriented. Um, and she grew up in Munising. So, I mean, same kind of thing. there's so many, so many natural wonders up here. Yeah. You just have a lot of uh, opportunity to get out. And that's my excuse for why I didn't get out. Cause I grew up in Illinois. There wasn't any, see, I could have been getting out. I could have been, get, been yeah, getting out. But there's nothing in Illinois to get out to do. It's <laughs> so like bonfires, I guess. <laughs> that's about it. So, okay. So you're interested in animal the animal ki the the reptile amphibian kingdom mm -hmm. that's kind of cool but that that sort of like wades away at some point no i would still say i really yeah. like frogs and stuff like if we're hiking and i see a frog i like have to catch it and mm. look at it and but yeah i would i would say it has become less of a hobby and more of just a yeah i enjoy them but i'm not going to necessarily spend a lot of time going and catching frogs i'd rather spend that doing like farming or gardening or mm. I like fishing a lot too. So I do a lot of that in the summer. And do, oh, nice. Yeah. Do you have uh, like where you live currently? Do you have like a garden going? Do you do in indoor, outdoor? Yes, I have an outdoor garden. Um, and it's just kind of like on the side of my apartment. And um, it's just kind of like a bunch of just scattered raised beds wherever I get a little bit of sunlight. Mm. Um, but then I do have a I have like a little bit of uh, some plants inside as well. And so I've got like a grow light and I was growing some, some hot peppers this winter. Mm, nice. Mm. Okay. So here's a question for you. Nature question. Mm -hmm. Well, so I'll give a little context if you're listening and you're like, okay, these guys are talking about nature and bugs and things. Like, what is this all about? Um, this week in worship. So in the sermon series, surprised by hope, uh, we've kind of come, I mean, you, you can tell me too, like, as you've been listening along, like, I think we've kind of talked about this idea that, God's concern is really for all creation. I think that's kind of come through prior to this last week. Mm -hmm. um, but that was really the focus of this last week, especially this idea of salvation um, not being only for, you know, like our individual souls mm -hmm. or even for humankind, but that actually God loves his creation, right? So, he made it good in the beginning and he cares for it still. And uh, part of Jesus' return is renewing uh, all of creation, so, that's kind of the theme of this week, and I, I started uh, the sermon by just like trying to connect with people on that um, natural wonder level, where it's like, have you ever been in nature, you know, and like, I don't know, maybe sense the divine even, right? Because um, not everyone has, and it's not everyone's like sort of, you know, uh, some people connect to God more through ritual mm -hmm. and worship and liturgy. Some people connect to God more through relationships and um, sharing of stories. Um, but there's a handful of people that I've encountered that it's like uh, nature for them is sort of this like inroad to 
experiencing the divine or, you know, God's mm. goodness. Um, has that ever happened? Like, have you ever been in a, in a place and you were just like struck? You're like, wow, like overwhelmed? Yeah. Um, I don't know if I would ever describe it as overwhelmed. I feel like whenever, like, I feel like God is present. I feel like it's more of like a, like a peaceful response than like a overwhelmed response. And, mm. and maybe, maybe it's overwhelmed by peace. I don't know if that's the right way of saying it, but like, sure. yeah. And so I feel like there's a lot of times, like even, I like one thing I love about here is just like the connection between like the city and nature and how they're like growing almost like into each other. Mm. Um, and I love coming, I live in Hancock. And so I come kind of up that hill towards the bridge. And I love like, there's like a couple weeks in the fall and the spring when I can see the sunrise as I'm going to work like in the bridge and everything. And it, it's just mm. a, a beautiful thing. Um, and it's always just a moment as I'm driving quickly see it as like a, a, a thank you to God and everything like that. And so I think there's moments like that where you're just kind of going and you see it and you have to, I mean, obviously, if I'm driving, so I can't stop on the Uber loop around the bridge. But like, you, you at least mentally pause for like what I was thinking about to be like, wow, that is really beautiful, and that's something that God is worthy of praise for. Oh, sure, yeah, yeah. So it like kind of it captivates us in some way, or it yeah. draws our attention. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, I think for me, especially, this would be more being in this area. Um, prior to living here, uh, my wife and I, we lived in like major cities, mm -hmm. so we were in. Uh, Milwaukee area together yeah. uh, for college, and then we lived in Denver, and then we lived in St. Louis. And uh, now you have natural beauty in those places too. It's not like yeah. you can't go find it, mm -hmm. um, or like in Colorado, like the mountains are staring at you. You know, mm -hmm. like every day, it's amazing. Um, but because you know, I would say like the urbanness to the nature like kind of outweighed it. Mm. I, it was so easy for me during that stretch of time. Like, I kind of lost touch with nature. Or mm. I feel like since being back, I've been reawakened, maybe. Yeah. You know, like at night, you look at the sky here. And it's like, this is amazing. Yeah. Like, I, and I've already, I think, taking for granted how many stars I can see at night, you know? Mm. Like, I should be out there every night just looking up, you know? Because um, in St. Louis, I mean, you look up in maybe three yeah. stars. And you one know? of them's a helicopter. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, I think we can all, you know, maybe not we can all, but um, many of us. Maybe everybody has experienced at some point, yeah, something about nature, whether it was just the wonder of a seed mm -hmm. exploding into life or, uh, or yeah, the tranquility of a sunrise um, that sort of, I don't know, touches us. Um, yeah. Yeah. For me, it was uh, uh, actually Colorado has, has been, I think, one of those places for me. Um, just the grandeur of the mountains, you mm -hmm. know, there was a time, um, well, my family's from Colorado and mm -hmm. so... Uh, we travel there every summer and, uh, but again, we weren't like super nature -y, So it's like, you know, you can hike, you can climb mountains in Colorado. Yeah. We never did that. We just drove in the car to like mm. the top of Pike Peak and then, you know, went inside the gift shop and got, you know, cookies. And, <laughs> but there was a, like a, a midway point where there's a bathroom, right? And we got out to stretch our legs and use the bathroom. And, and, uh, I guess I did have this like kind of hunger for nature. Mm. It's so, like I wandered off, uh, you know, by myself and just to kind of like a rocky, craggy, you know, uh, area where you could, I mean, you could just see forever, mm. you know, it's such a, well, I guess this is called a mountaintop view, you yeah. know? And there was something about, yeah, being there. Um, and being, I guess being by myself, not that you can't share those moments with other people. I think you can, mm -hmm. but, um, yeah, I don't know. That moment sticks out for me is like this sort of like, like feeling the presence of God, um, which I guess like the, the, the Bible itself, especially in the Psalms will describe oftentimes, you know, God in like natural language, mm -hmm. you know, say like his righteousness, uh, is like the mountains of God, you know, or his judgments are like the great deep. <laughs> Sorry, I'm very tangential in my mind, but do you? I also mentioned David Attenborough in my sermon. Mm -hmm. Are you familiar with that fella? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You watch a little Our Planet? Um, I do more uh, Planet Earth. Mm -hmm. Planet mm -hmm. Earth person, but. That's the one. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah, super awesome. Oh my gosh. It's crazy how many natural wonders there are, mm -hmm. you know? And I feel like what's cool about that is they even take just like a normal animal and like they do some storytelling with it obviously but like they like as they explain like how it lives and what it goes through to live like there's like they they bring out the wonder of like what that animal is even in those things and so i feel like even like you know your your simple animals like a penguin or something it's like mm. an amazing story mm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. dude one of the really amazing stories you ever see those little ducks that jump off the cliff Oh yes, <laughs> or I think I think in the planet Earth it was like they come out of a tree and they're just like falling all the way down and yeah, hilarious it's, and horrifying. But they live. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, well, so now I'm kind of curious to ask, uh, you know, so uh, 
yeah, just level with me, Taylor, as much as you want. But this idea of of salvation. So for me, I'll put my cards on the table first. That's a better way to go. Like when I was growing up, and when I was in church, and it, I mean, honestly, had anyone asked me, I mean, even if someone asked me today, hey, what does it mean that you're saved? Like I would probably, de- I would probably default to an answer about salvation that's very like individual to me, mm. probably. Mm. And um, I might even, I think I'm getting a little better at like the resurrection of the dead, like mm-hmm. really informing my my hope, yeah. you know, as like kind of the ultimate destination. Um, this has been, I think, one of the biggest components of the sermon series that's like more of a challenge for people, more of a, a leap. Is this language for you? Is that is this new language or is this something you've you feel like you've been more exposed to in your in your Christian walk? Yeah, I don't know if it's new language. Um, I think the framework that I usually think it through is like a kingdom framework mm-hmm. or, or mindset. Um, I read this really good book, maybe maybe college, maybe soon after college, called Kingdom Come, um, and it was just looking at like similar to what we said. Like, it's not just about your individualized personal salvation, but you know, Jesus is building and bringing a kingdom. Um, where all things are renewed, and that includes us, um, and so our own salvation is important in that, but it mm. includes nature, and it includes culture and society and the laws that we build and the way that we interact with others, and so it's like just all aspects of it um, are under like Jesus's kingdom, and I think that's mm. usually how I, I think about it, which I think it's it's different, but also very similar, and I think it's just wording. Oh, well, sure, yeah, mm. but I would say that that whole notion of even kingdom language, mm. you know, I think it's a very helpful way to talk. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's uh, you got a lot of biblical precedent for it, for one, because Jesus talks that way a lot, you know. Yeah. And uh, and two, it helps, yeah, sort of get out of that individual. I mean, that's a very Western thing, right? Like yeah. we live in a very individualized society. Um, we can kind of, I mean, a lot of people either think you make it on your own. Mm. Actually, there's a song. Do you ever listen to the Weepies? The Weepies, dude, the great band. I'll share that. Oh man. All right. Hey, uh, if you, I, we don't have show notes on this show because I don't know how to do show notes. But if anyone else wants to hear the song from the Weepies, let me know. I'll shoot you a link. Uh, but they say uh, in the song, one of the lyrics is uh, something to the effect of the most important steps are the ones that you take all by yourself. Hmm. And every time I hear that lyric come through, I'm always like, no, <laughs> you know, like I, I got to push back against it because I think that's a very Western, yeah, you know, very sort of like. I pull myself up by my bootstraps, you know, I, I, I'm my, the master of my destiny, you know, and the, the scriptural picture is, no, it's like way more communal. Yeah. You know? Oh, like go looking ahead. At, looking at like Israel, like when they as a nation, like were taken over, it was because they as a nation failed and so then they were conquered and then as a nation they were crying out like, save us together, not just me. Mm. And so it's just whole like, you know, as a nation they sinned and so then they were sent into exile and then as a nation they were mm. longing for, for this renewal. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, and so it's very much more of a communal aspect to it. Yeah, and and that reality plays through today mm-hmm. as well, right? Where like we don't live in a vacuum; like we're Correct. all interconnected. Yeah. So even things we do societally have sort of ramifications for everyone, um, which is maybe an interesting segue into, you know. And this was okay. So here's more cards, more of my cards on the table. <laughs> I referenced, you know, what I thought were maybe some low-hanging fruit in terms of environmental issues that get talked about, yeah. all right? My cars is like, I I am not speaking as someone super well-informed on these issues. Mm-hmm. Um, actually, if you want to talk to someone f- more well-informed than me, uh, talk to my wife, talk to Molly. Uh, she is one of the biggest influences on for me in my life in terms of even like thinking about nature. See, yeah. again, like my story, right? I'm like adverse to nature. Like I always thought about like, yeah, how do I basically manipulate nature to do what I want, you know, kind of mm-hmm. a thing. And um, and so it's been helpful for me to uh, not just change behavior, but like also grow an appreciation for nature. But, um, but like when we think about living together and communally, um, you know, the impact we have as a society, like is that, are you kind of aware of some of those like, I mean, they come up in the David Attenborough stuff, I feel like, pretty often. Yeah. I don't know if you've, like, I was just curious, like, have you, if you've dug into or, like, experienced, like, what, if you had to say, these are, this is the major ecological crisis facing Mm. America today, or environmental. Uh, You can also choose to no comment if you want. I'm not a scientist for that, and so I don't know if my my saying anything is going to really be influential, Um, Mm. but I think it is, like, an important thing to, to think through. Um. And probably because I feel like what people say is like the real 
problems with the environmental issues is not individual consumers, but it's like the corporations that are doing. Mm. And so like, and there's, there's, it's like negatives in that too, where it's like, well, what you do to help the environment isn't as helpful as what you think it is, but it is a good thing to do mm. um, because it's, I think it's what's right to do to, to care for the world that God has given us. Um, but then, the, then there's also then this political aspect that we need to have stricter like rules or regulations on what corporations are allowed to do for cleaning up the environment or for preventing them from hurting the environment or stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And then I think that's also then also just checking our consumeristic tendencies. I feel like even in, like in America, we just want to consume and to get more and to get the new mm. um, instead of just being content with what we have. And then I think that's also then a, like a spiritual aspect as well. How do we be content with what we have and, and what um, God has given us and being content in Jesus that way? Yeah, absolutely. I dig that. Um, uh, because I do think you're right. Like sometimes we can, it's like we, we try, we think that these things will bring us joy and they do, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, or at least they bring you some level of gratification, yeah. which I, I want to really make that distinct from joy mm -hmm. uh, and kind of reserve that word joy for, uh, yeah, for the way the scriptures talk about it and, and the joy that uh, God brings and the peace and contentment is much more enduring. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So, no, I, I really appreciate that. And, uh, but yeah, I think on the, I like the comment you made too, like environmentally, whether or not my impact is going to turn the tide, you know, it's like, that's probably a bit, I'm, I'm making too much of myself if I, if I think that I'm going to be the one that like turns the tide yeah. of, you know, where any of these issues are headed, but kind of asking myself, okay, well, what would it look like for me to respond to anything in my life or any way I'm living my life if I look at creation and say, hey, this is God's. And it's really a blessing and a gift, mm -hmm. and I want to honor that. Yeah, um, yeah, because like I know uh, I saw an ad recently that was like trying to dissuade me from recycling. Really, I thought that was so odd. It was trying to dissuade me, and I was like, "Look, I don't know if, if there's some crazy conspiracy beside you know behind recycling that it's actually worse for the environment, but uh, I, I don't think so. So I'm just gonna you know I'm gonna put my thing in the. <laughs> I mean, recycling is it's kind of a PR thing because yeah. the majority of what we recycle doesn't actually get recycled. It just that's what the ad was about. Yeah, because like the because it's all about like wherever you dump your waste, it's up to them how the they sort through. Things. And like we live in a small town, so we don't have as many like the facilities don't have as many powers to recycle. Yeah, and so like you know, there's not much you can do about that. That's what. Yeah, another member was sharing that uh, with me in terms of a uh, Calumet. I think is where they're at, mm. and uh, there's some some uh, conversation going on in terms of their recycling. Like I don't think they have that capability even right yeah. now, like to have recycling. Mm -hmm. Well then, well let's, let's transition this way then. And, and I'll just ask you Taylor, like in your life, like what are, what are, what are the Taylor peering ways that you appreciate God's creation? Like, what does it look like for you to say, Hey, this is pretty cool. God made all this stuff and mm -hmm. I get to kind of, you know, do stuff with it. Like what's, what do you like to do? Yeah. Um, I think, I guess like the main one is just getting out in nature and whether that's camping or hiking or fishing or gardening um, or I guess whatever else you like to do. I guess winter sports too, you know, like skiing, like snow is mm. super beautiful and especially mm -hmm. when it's like clinging to the trees and stuff. Mm. Um, and so getting out in nature and then I'm a person that likes to do things to get them done. And so one of the things that I've been trying really hard to grow in is to almost like enjoy the moment as I'm doing things and not do them just to like get to the end of me done and move on to the next thing. Mm. Uh, and so as I am like gardening or hiking, like not just like putting my head down and just plowing through everything, but to be like, all right, what do I need to like see? Like where, where do I see sense God's presence in this nature? Or, or as I'm, you know, where do I see beauty in the garden that, that I'm building and stuff like that. And so like, I think that's a big thing for me. Um, and I feel like there's probably some people that also would want to, to practice that too. It's just like remembering to, to slow down and to enjoy the moments and not just work your way through them real fast. Sure. Smell the roses, yeah. as it were, mm -hmm. as you're planting them yeah. and growing them <laughs> and clipping them, yes. you know. Avoiding the thorns. Yeah, I can never do that. I'm bad at that. Well, we have raspberry bushes in our yard. Oh. And I just, I'm a doofus and I wear shorts out there and I'm like, whatever. Yeah. And then I get all scratched up. Yeah. Like, I should wear pants. Mm, yep. Well, if you're interested, uh, listener, uh, in, in some ways to... Uh, to maybe beef up your, well, I don't know, because maybe you're coming at this and you're like, look, maybe you're like me 10 years ago and you're like, nature is my enemy. I'm just trying to survive out here in this wilderness. 
uh, and you're like, so I don't know what it means to delight in in nature, and you're looking for some uh, some ideas, or how do I honor God's creation? Uh, we did post uh, to our website, copperluth.org slash surprised by hope. Um, a resource, Aaron had some resources in there you can check out on the Kevin and Hell, uh, but there's a new resource in there that talks about uh, just different ways you can uh, well, appreciate God's creation or do something in your own little patch uh, that sort of honors that and, and gets you in. So, check that out. Uh, but I also want to reference, so here at St. Peter and Paul, uh, maybe you've noticed it, but I know there are some people like, wait a minute, we have a garden? I'm like, yeah, it's like right there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like we sit next to it at those outdoor worships. Um, so, there is a garden at our church with what, 12 raised beds, 10 raised beds? And 10, yeah. 10 raised beds. And um, there's kind of a longer history behind the garden, um, you know, how it started, kind of the vision of the ministry, um, uh, which ended up getting a little bit stifled during the pandemic. You know, a lot of things shut down. That was one of them. Well, uh, recently, uh, the garden has been getting used again, both by our early learning center. Uh, so, the children of the early learning center have gone out to kind of learn about plants and pull weeds and just interact, kind of like what you're saying, interact with, with God's creation. Um, but also, Taylor, you have been out there mm-hmm. with some friends. Uh, can you t- just tell us a little bit, like, uh, your, what are you guys up to in the garden? What's your, what's your vision? What's your hope? Mm-hmm. How's it been out there? Yeah. So, um, what are we up to? Well, obviously we're gardening, you know? Mm. Um, yeah. So I just, again, I, I love putting seeds in the ground and just watching plants grow and then getting food from them. Um, and my, so kind of like my hope with this, with this garden in particular is that, um, along with the early learning center, the, whatever we grow and produce can be shared among the community here. And so my thought was like, maybe during the, uh, what do you call it, like community times between the services where there's like oh, the yeah, fellowship yeah yeah just have like a box of whatever we're growing out so if people want like a tomato or something they can have that or take zucchini home to cook it or whatever um just because i can't eat all of that food mm. i would get so tired of vegetables <laughs> <laughs> um, and so just uh using those gifts to like better the community and to share it with people um because i think that's just a blessing to me like when you see someone enjoy something that you have worked hard on like that's a, mm. that's a blessing and so um yeah using it for for the kids to to learn um and to enjoy and then for for the community to enjoy too yeah and those kids i'm trying to think they come out uh was it wednesdays like i'm losing track i think it's wednesday i'm not 100 percent sure yeah well i'll put it this way if you are interested if you're listening you're like hey i like gardening i want to be a part of that i want to put my work into something and have others enjoy it um if you want to be uh, a part of the garden um with the kids, the young children, you can reach out to Jamie at copperluth.org. That's J-A-I-M-E uh, at copperluth.org. She's our ELC director and uh, kind of runs that up. Uh, Taylor, do you got, is there room if other people want to come hang out with you guys? Oh, yeah. Everything is mostly planted, so they can't, you know, be like, oh, I want to plant this now. But if you want to help, you know, weed and, and harvest and stuff like that, yeah, more than helpful, more than welcome to have people come help out. Any experience needed? No. We'll teach you. You'll it's pretty simple at this point, you know, just enjoy what's happening. Awesome. Water a little bit. There you go. There's your invitation from the Taylor Peering. Mm-hmm. Uh, should they, can I, can we put your email onto the yes. interwebs? Yeah. So tmp.peering, which is P-I-E-R-I-N-G at gmail.com. There you go. There's you your all, invitation. You can all spam me now. <laughs> You're going to get blasted mm-hmm. after this, man. Yeah. Uh, well, there you go. So, yeah, if you see Taylor hanging around uh, with with some uh, friends, you know that they are not a uh, – the the walls are open. The gate is – the door is open. Even if the gate's closed, it's technically open. <laughs> it's always unlocked. <laughs> Just hop it. Just yeah. jump it. Uh, well, no, man. I appreciate uh, you coming on and sharing your uh, your story a little bit. Man. I got to remember like your inner varsity history. That's like, mm. so, so that's a whole nother conversation. So I'm not going to like introduce it in the last minute here, but um, uh, that's really, I mean, discipleship is kind of a big part of the DNA of, of this church. Um, yeah. So uh, yeah, be good to uh, brainstorm with you sometime or at least here, just like learn from your, your experience uh, uh, in that time. But, um, but this is Taylor Peering. He's been with us. Thank you, man. Yeah. Uh, cheers to you, brother. Cheers. And happy gardening. Blink. <laughs>